please raise your hand if you think fitness is bad for you. <laughs> that is awesome, so we can skip all that stuff that you've heard a thousand times. Yes, you should work out. Yes, fitness is good for you. You've heard that. You've heard it to death. So I don't want to talk about all that stuff today. I don't want to give you a bunch of numbers and a bunch of statistics and things that you already know. But what I do want to talk about is some of the deeper benefits behind fitness, wellness, activity, and then more importantly, the, the, the secrets behind it. How can you take this information and how can you put it into practical use for yourselves or those around you? And I want to try and share simple ways to do that. Fitness, much like most other things within our society, especially in Western culture, we tend to overcomplicate. We make it too challenging, we make it too hard, we make it too confusing. So my goal today is to try and simplify some of those things. How do we develop a balanced body? How do we develop a body that lets us live the life that we want to lead? In my, in my opinion, and, and as a professional, and whether I'm working with, with athletes or, or young populations or older populations or people who have never been off the couch or anywhere in between, Fitness really just comes down to enhancing quality of life. That's it. That's it. Now, if you're a competitive athlete, that means that you perform better in your particular sport. If you've never been off the couch before, that means that you can get off the couch. If you're getting into your 60s and 70s and 80s and you love golf, it means you can continue to play golf into your 90s and, and, and plus. That's all fitness is about, is quality of life. It's not meant to run your life. It's not meant to be a burden. It's meant to be something that can give you the life that you want to lead, allow you to do the things that you want to do well into old age, and just to have a body that works or develops. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, these are, this is nothing new. This is all stuff that you've heard before. <clears throat> but I, again, want to talk about some of the deeper benefits of movement and activity and fitness, because they are abundant. There's a whole lot. And I hope after today, you get a different idea of what fitness, and especially movement, is. I'm a big fan of movement. And, and I'm going to talk about that and expand upon it a little bit more. So, with, with some response from, from the audience, what makes us whole? What are the different pieces that make a person a person? Whatever you think, just shout it out. Nutrition, food, fuel. Your, your emotion, that's exactly. What else? So emotion, physical. Attitude. Attitude. Your outlook on life. What else? Motivation. Motivation. What else? Personality. Personality. Feelings. Feelings. What else? Sleep. <laughs> we're getting we're getting close to. Which which one have we missed so far? Physical. Not just exercise, but physical. We are physical beings. We know we're emotional beings. We know we're spiritual beings. But sometimes that physical gets left out. Or... When you get over We... Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough crowd, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> or we look at them as separate. We think of spiritual health. We think of emotional health. We think of physical health. But do they exist as three separate entities? I don't think so. I really, really don't. If you think about the, the wonderful human machine that we were imparted with from birth, it is a complex and wonderful machine that was built for movement. We were built to be up and around and moving. And think about how early man survived and and lived and thrived within life. And it's all around movement. We are physical beings. So what happens if there's one of those pieces missing? What happens if the physical is not totally there? Can we truly be complete? I would argue no. It's really, really hard for that massive pillar of who we are as individuals to be missing. So thinking of it that way, with that argument in mind, can I be spiritually sound? Can I be emotionally sound, mentally sound, if I'm not physically sound? Again, I say no. I say it can't happen. 
doesn't mean that you're not in a happy place. It doesn't mean that I'm not in a happy place. It doesn't mean that if I'm not working out 24-7 that I can't be happy with my life and my family and have a good attitude. Because that's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying that I will never truly be the spiritual and the emotional being that I want to be if I'm also not the physical being that I want to be. And again, we'll talk about kind of how to get there and what that really talks about. Because I want you to get this idea out of your head right now that, that I, I'm preaching, exercising 24 hours a day, going 6 a.m., two a day, so you got to work out, you know, no pain, no gain, and burpees till you throw up and all this other nonsense. Not, not in the least time it's a little bit. I guess not at all what, what I'm talking about. That's not at all what this is about. And that'll, that'll be a little bit more clear later. But what I am saying is that we are physical in nature. It is a part of our makeup. It is a part of who we are. So realizing that and putting the physical on the same level of importance as emotional and spiritual, now we start to look at things a little bit different. Let's look at the word emotion for a second. Now, are emotions important? Absolutely. Think about how emotions can control and govern your life. When life is good, your emotions are good. Things are wonderful. Your mind, everything just seems to work. Everything fits and falls into place. You walk into any situation, and you're happy. You're able to take everything with a grain of salt. Everything's good. Think about those tough points in your life where your emotions are almost dragging you down. They're not part of the solution. They become part of the problem. You're depressed. It's easy to get more depressed because I start looking at things very negatively. So emotions are a huge part of who we are, right? But really look at that word. Really look. Look at the screen. Look at that word. What do you see? I see that too. I love it. So when I think about motion as a part of the motion, it just kind of goes back to that idea of that whole piece, that whole being working, interconnected. And I love this play on this word because to me it just shows interconnection. That I can't be an emotional being without being a physical being. And all those other things that go into it. This is one of my favorite little sketches. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before. This was done by Walt Disney. And this was done sometime back in the 30s, I believe. I know it's a little gray, it's actually really tough to find. Um, as, as, as I'm sure you know, most of us know, cartoons were not big. Animation was not what it was before Walt Disney. There was live action and characters. Walt Disney was a pioneer. He was someone saying, you can animate anything. People can believe it. They say cartoons won't work and drawings and kid stuff and nonsense. It's not a true artistic expression. It's not a true medium. So he drew this as a way to show that you can animate anything. So what that is, that is just a bag of flour. An inanimate object with no facial expressions, no visible motion. And he drew it in different positions to show that just through movement you can describe motion. I think that's wonderful. I love the cocky one. You can see the chest is really inflated. Laughter. On its back, rolling around, hunching over. You can see the movement, the gyrations. Joy, in that second row, jumping up and down. Curious, on the far right, the kind of little peek up right there. That is a bag of flour. A bag of flour. And just through 